Well, hello there, and a very good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to JW3's Big Night in 2021. My name is Natasha Kaplinski, and I am absolutely delighted to be your host for tonight's extravaganza, and what an action-packed hour or so we have planned for you. Coming up, we have live music, lots of chat with an incredible array of guests, and importantly, we will also have the chance to learn a little more about the extraordinary work of this wonderful charity, JW3, and how you can help to support it. So let's hope you are sitting comfortably um, with a cup of tea or possibly something a little more exciting and ready to enjoy the entertainment that we have planned for you ahead. So coming up, we're going to be joined by the one and only Harry Hill by Claudia Winkleman. Dame Maureen Littman and the totally wonderful Dame Arlene Phillips. And if that isn't enough excitement for the night, Gabby Roslin's going to be with us as well. And all the way from America, we persuaded uh, Mike Barker, director of The Handmaid's Tale, who's going to be zooming in to talk to us. From the US, we're going to be taking you all the way to Israel, and we're going to be joined by Leo Raz, who's bound to cause a little bit of extra excitement and that is just the start. We are so happy that you've chosen to be with us tonight and we would love for you to join in all the fun that we've got planned for you. So please do use the comment section on the JW3 website or simply get in touch with us via Facebook. We would really love to hear where you're tuning in from this evening and hopefully you're going to be having some money to spend to support us tonight. Now, let me tell you a little more about JW3 and, and why we're all here tonight. So let's welcome, please, Chief Executive Raymond Simonson. Raymond. Good evening, Natasha, and thank you so much for joining us live here from JW3 for this very, very special evening. So I'll be mostly popping up a handful of times throughout the evening to say a few words to you at home about JW3, to give some updates on how we're doing with this amazing fundraising campaign. Because as you know, Natasha, Whilst this evening is all about having some good old fashioned, socially distanced <laughs> entertainment, music, comedy and chat, the main reason we are here, and why all of our guests tonight, including Natasha, have generously donated their time and their talent, it's to raise important funds for this charity that I am very proud to lead as Chief Executive. JW3, as many of you will know, is a unique charity, running the only Jewish community centre and venue for arts and culture of its kind in the UK, open and accessible to all. And when the COVID pandemic turned our worlds upside down, JW3 was there for everyone who needed us, week in, week out, lifting spirits, engaging minds, enriching lives. When coronavirus demanded distance and isolation, we continued to bring people together from every walk of life, across multiple divides, regardless of geography, belief, race or ability, building community and strengthening society. And whilst we certainly did everything we could to reduce our costs, the need for our charitable services and our activities are greater now than they have ever been. We have seen demand for our unique blend of culture, community and conversation soar. And we need to ensure we can meet that growing demand. And that's why this glittering array of stars have all agreed immediately to give us their support for this evening, for which I am eternally grateful. It's also why I'm going to ask every single one of you watching at home to show us your support too. If you enjoy any part of tonight's 
free event. Or if anything you hear about JW3 this evening moves you, please, please get out your phone, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen, you can see it down there, or go to that website, charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash Big Night In, and give as big as you can for our Big Night In campaign. Now, here's the really exciting bit, if you hadn't heard, every pound given as part of our 36-hour match fund campaign will be doubled. So every donation you make is worth twice as much to JW3. Why? Well, this is all thanks to the phenomenal generosity of a group of donors who have collectively come together to create a match fund pot. To those match funders who I know are watching at home, I want to say a huge, huge thank you for your outstanding generosity. Now, all you all have to do at home is sit back, enjoy the show, and trigger that match funding by whipping out your phone and donating. You can do it once, you can do it many times. It's as simple as that. And to help give you a brief overview of the brilliant work that our team of phenomenal volunteers and staff have been doing to build community over the past year, please just sit back and watch this short film. Here we go. I'm Raymond Simonson. I'm the CEO of JW3, and it is fantastic to have our doors open and to have the public starting to come back into the building again. Welcome back to JW3. Welcome back, welcome back. Hello, everyone, you beautiful people. It was so good to be liberated from Zoom and to actually be able to be here in person. It is absolutely excellent to be back at JW3. I'm delighted and, you know, my bus came straight away. <laughs> the community is so valuable and places like this where people can come together from different backgrounds is really, really valuable. I mean, this is a place where it's a hub of culture, of uh, uh, fun, of learning. It's a little bit of, uh, of Israel here. This is one of the most high high quality social centers in London. It's a place where people from all cultures, background, religion, they all, you know, they come here. I'm absolutely delighted to be back in the building. It's really lovely to be able to fill the building with laughter and with smiley children and with smiley adults. I think the beach is very cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no? So I cannot add anything else. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to make our children feel slightly normal again. Fantastic week. So one of the most fantastic things about JW3 is that we can be many things at the same time. I'm standing right here, right in front of me is the Tel Aviv beach. Above it is a huge sign for the Israeli TV and film festival. And right behind me is a vaccine bus where people of all different faiths and all different backgrounds are getting vaccinated. That just shows the multiple dimensions of JW3 and why we're such an essential part of the Jewish community and wider community. It stands for more than just, it stands for more than just sort of religion or, or culture. It's, it's, it's in London, it sort of blends what London stands for, which is that blend of cultures. And you get to learn so much. I've learned so much about Jewish culture. I've met so many friends here. And, you know, you get to hear the music that is klezmer, that is like, you know, traditional Jewish music here that you wouldn't anywhere else. GW3 is definitely a venue that you can really step into, immerse yourself into. When we went into lockdown, our first thought was that how on earth are we going to bring this into people's homes and what impact can we make? On a regular basis, we brought cultural experiences right into people's houses, right through the screen. And the feedback we got from that was just so fantastic. JW3 has been a crucial part of all our lives. To get that feeling of fulfillment, here I am in a place where people care, where my mind can be opened. You get the most amazing talks because JW3 do have the most amazing lectures. We are a Jewish communal space that is there for the wider community and that does a hell of a lot of good for the Jewish community. Well, I can't believe how wonderful this, it is, the discovery of JW3. It's community, it's family, it's, it's a home that everyone and anyone is able to feel comfortable in and, and share. Unique, really. I mean, there isn't any, I can't think of any other place like it. Uh, it does need to be supported. Um, there's enough variety, there's something for everybody. Please support JW3.
JW3, uh, do it now. You said please. I really love this place and I've just always found it to be incredibly welcoming and supportive. It's exciting to be a part of. If you want to find a building that supports you as an artist and as an individual, I, I don't know of a better one than JW3. If you can bring people together, if you can strengthen community, you transform not just individual lives, but you transform the Jewish community and wider society. So we need you to help us ensure that JW3 remains at the heart of the community, impacting on more lives than ever before. Hey, best wishes to all at JW3's fundraiser. Wish I was there. Wow, thank you, Whippy, setting the bar very high tonight with such fantastic support. We so wish you were here too, Whippy. Perhaps next year we can persuade you. And how fantastic to see how JW3 has impacted the wider community. That's brilliant. Now, as you have seen, the community has been affected in so many different ways with every single uh, week JW3 doing something special. And that is why we are all here tonight to help JW3 reach more people than ever before. Support JW3, it's really, really simple. Please just follow the cues at the bottom of the screen as you can see now that all important website, charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash big night in, or simply you scan that all important QR code and uh, the money's really rolling in already. So thank you very much indeed for that early support. Well, it's been a funny old time recently, hasn't it? But I, I'm sure that it hasn't stopped many of you seeing that homegrown smash hit musical six. Well, the show's success has been unprecedented. And I believe second to Hamilton, no less, it's the most downloaded musical in history with over 250 million downloads. What an achievement. And tonight, I'm absolutely thrilled to say that we persuaded the show's composer, Toby Marlowe, to be with us live in JW3. Welcome, Toby, <laughs> honestly. I mean, first of all, Great that you're with us this evening and actually that we can almost touch each other, but not quite. Um, you must be so thrilled to have audiences back in the theatre now. Oh, no, it, it feels amazing. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's been such a, you know, a really difficult, devastating time for the theatre community, um, not just in, in London, but, but everywhere. And so it just feels so, so wonderful um, for everyone involved in the show and everyone in the West End just to be back performing live again. It just feels incredible. Um, now, for those people who've lived under a rock, um, <laughs> tell us a bit about Six. <laughs> um, uh, so, so it's a musical uh, written uh, by me and my collaborator, uh, Lucy Moss. Um, and we wrote it when we were at uni and it's basically, um, it, it's a musical, it's a pop concert musical um, of a girl group on stage. Um, and the girl group happened to be the six wives of Henry VIII. Uh, competing to be the leading lady of said girl group. Yeah. Can I just take you back a bit? Because you said you did it <laughs> while you were at university, like you just by accident turned out like this huge hit. Um, how did you manage that and also study? And, and did you actually do well in your degree as well? <laughs> um, I passed. <laughs> of course. Degree, <laughs> I passed, yeah. they gave me a degree. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, no, so we wrote it in our final year because the, the Uni's Musical Theatre Society wants to take an original musical to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Um, and so we um, applied uh, with, with an idea and um, and then they, they let us write it and we took it to the fringe that summer kind of like as, as an end of uni summer project not expecting anything <laughs> else to ever happen uh, beyond with it um, and so everything since then has just really been mind-blowing and your world must have been rocked with the success that you've enjoyed since and what's happening to the show right now um, so I just got back from New York last week where we just um, uh, managed to reopen on oh not reopen open for the first time on Broadway uh, and it's running in the West End and on a UK tour um, and it should be hope, um, hopefully opening in some more locations uh, soon. And is there pressure on you to produce the next hit show now? Are well, you writing We've already? been working away a bit in lockdown okay. um, uh, on, on some new material um, and which has been really fun and so hopefully 
that'll get to be coming out soon. And also, um, we were able to do another run of another show we wrote at uni called Hot Gay Time Machine, which we did with Zach, who you'll be hearing singing in a minute. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it's just, you know, and hopefully there'll be more things happening with that soon as well. So what yeah. an exciting time for you. Really I mean, really, really phenomenal. Now, uh, I know you've got a very supportive family and um, <laughs> you've written something that you're going to perform later on and yeah. there's someone special behind it. Yeah, so this is um, uh, a song that uh, I um, I wrote uh, for uh, an organisation, a charity uh, that um, my my grandma, Simon Lapmaker, um, uh, kind of uh, created a couple of years ago, back in 2018. And it's basically um, an initiative that um, helps uh, young people with learning difficulties and physical disabilities with public speaking. And so um, with the organisation, they have training and mentorship and then they host events where these young people get up on a platform and they they read out um speeches that they themselves have written um about themselves about something they're passionate about and then a couple of years ago for one of these events my amazing grandma asked me if i would write um, a song to perform at, at, at one of the events and i said obviously i'd love to and so the lyrics are kind of made up from snippets from some of the speeches that that these young people wrote Okay, um, yeah. well, your amazing grandma, shout out to her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me. I know you're going to take your seat at the piano now, aren't mm -hmm. you? So thank you very much. Fantastic, Toby. Thank right. you very thank much. You you're so going to play for us because uh, you can now sit back at home and relax and get comfortable. Enjoy listening to the fabulous actor, Zach Ghazi Torbani. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hello. I have. Good. Good. He's got an amazing voice. And Toby Marlowe. They are just about to perform um, an amazing number. I've heard them rehearsing. And oh my gosh, I wish I could say like you so take it away thank you very much thank you isn't real but do you think that I give a damn nothing's gonna hold me back today everybody has something to say and when they call we will hear them hear them shouting gotta make the most of who we are even if they think we won't go far think again because now we're speaking out Raising up my voice Now I have the choice You're gonna listen to every noise and every word No, won't hold me back today Because I'm here to say That now it's time for every voice to be heard Why did you choose to tell me I would lose To always make me feel left out I have a life, a job, and my community. Love is what it's all about. Everybody now and then they fall, so we've got to be kind to one and all. And when they fall, we will hear them, hear them shouting. So even if you think you'll disappear, just know somebody else is near. And together as one, we're speaking out. Raising up our voice, now we have the choice You're gonna listen to every noise and every word No, won't hold me back today Because I'm here to say That now it's time for every voice to be heard We're speaking out, speaking out Now it's time for to be heard independence all i want is independence so to all you in attendance believe me when i say we're speaking out raising up our voice now we have the choice you're gonna listen to every noise and every word. Won't 
hold me back today because I'm here to say and now it's time for every voice to be heard we're speaking now speaking now now it's time for every voice to be heard speaking now speaking now now it's time for every voice to be heard Rapturous applause. Honestly, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, you're so talented. Absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you could just play all night. Uh, but for now, we send our huge gratitude and already you can see the response with the money that's coming in. So thank you. Oh gosh, I wish I could live again. Uh, that really was amazing. Thank you so much, Zach. And to Toby, well, shortly, we're going to get our first update on how the fundraising campaign is actually going. That's what it's all about. But before that, let's see a little bit more about the incredible work that J3 is doing to bring people together, creating connections and strengthening community. JW3 is at the very heart of the British Jewish community. And JW3 makes, it makes connections, it brings together young people, the survivors, brings us um, in from, from different worlds. It's cross-generational, you can come in here, there are tiddlers, there are kids, there are all ages, even mine. <laughs> we've got the beach, we've got the winter ice rink, all these sorts of things, and a lot of it's only just starting to open up because of coronavirus as well, which is which is great for everyone. You can meet anybody you like, and you can bring anybody you like. It's just, uh, just a place to have fun and hang out. Come to uh, the events, come and read, come and talk, come and connect with people and learn something new. I love coming to JW3 and I love that it does that meeting point of intergenerational art making and to have an institution backing us is so important. We are very, very happy to see people back in this building. What we learned very quickly during lockdown is that our footprint is far larger than our shoe size. We are reaching more people in more parts, not just of London, but across the country, and in fact overseas, than we've ever reached before. I have really taken up with them in the last year because of all their online programmes. I've been able to participate in things, and actually I think some of the people who've talked have been able to, because they haven't always been in England. You know, they've been all over the place. You'll be amazed that I have pupils who immigrated to Israel, who could go and study in an Israeli ulpan while they live there, and they still uh, join our courses in Zoom because they think that's the best they can get. JW3 Zoom has been a lifeline. I'm a solitary person on that course that comes in from outside London. But over the weeks, I felt I've got to know the people that are on the course. And we ask, answer each other, we chat. Hi, Aviva. Hi, Judy. We know how to create some kind of club within the class. So they, they become attached to each other. They care about each other. There is a solidarity. We want to make sure that everybody has that same equal access to the high quality programming content that we do to lift their spirits, to engage their minds, to strengthen their Jewish identity, to bring them into contact with Jews of different backgrounds. And we can only do that with your support. It's a place where people, they can campaign, they can learn, they can appreciate, but also there's always fun here. It's so always a nice place to come. I feel that I'm part of the JW3 family when I'm coming on the Zoom. So I think it's extremely important that it manages to reach as many people as it can. It's creating new friendships, it's strengthening bonds, and it's creating community.
and all of that is such a great reminder of why we are all here tonight and why we're asking you to please give generously to help JW3 keep building strength in the community. Now, out the corner of my eye, uh, I can see the totals creeping up. So let's catch up uh, with Raymond to see how the campaign's going. It's lovely, isn't it? Some donations are £11 and sometimes they're, you know, thousands and thousands. It's, it's lovely. It really is. And that's what's so moving about it. People, people, you watching at home, People have got a fiver they can afford to give, they're giving it. If people can you know, give big, they're giving even bigger. And that is just so moving. It's not just about the amount we raise, although that is important. It's about how many of you out there are supporting our work. Uh, the latest, and I'm just looking up on my screen to check, but, but the latest we have is we've had over 990 different donations. Different people have donated um, uh, over the course of today, including this evening, which is phenomenal. So let's have a look at our first uh, total for this evening. And it looks like we have so far raised £353,848, which is a staggering, staggering start. That's all of you at home that have been giving over the last 24 hours. That's all of our JWB3 champions that have been texting people all night, badgering people all day. And that's everyone that's just tuned in, who's enjoying the performances we've put on for you this evening and who's getting their phones out, as you're going to do right now. If you <laughs> haven't had a chance yet because you're just enjoying the show, that's great. But now's a chance whilst I'm talking because you don't want to hear me. You want to get your phone out. There's that QR code on the bottom again. There's the URL, charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash Big Night In. Please give as generously as you can. Thank you. And it's so lovely to see those numbers creeping up. Yeah, Thank you very much. Indeed. More in a minute. And let's hope that those numbers keep climbing. That really is quite a figure so far, isn't it? What a great start to the evening. But I know that we can do better. I'm sure we can. And the great thing is that there is still plenty of opportunity to make a real difference and to give. Remember, every single pound that you give is matched. So automatically, that doubles in value. Aren't I brilliant at maths? Uh, right. Our next guest for the evening is the hilarious Harry Hill. Um, Harry. Are you there? Good evening. And it's great to see you. Can you start by telling us a little bit about how this last year has impacted you? Yeah, well, I've got my, <clears throat> I took the time in lockdown to um, accept a check to write an autobiography. Like every comedian in the country, um, I'm going to be in the bargain buckets in January. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the, yeah, that was something that was, um, I mean, it seemed like the perfect time to do it in a way, because there wasn't any work. <clears throat> <laughs> showbiz ground to a halt and I did a few zoom gigs you know these um, zoom gigs but it kind of it was just a weird feeling standing in your front room shouting at a laptop uh, you know and I sort of come down uh, I'd go into the kitchen afterwards with sort of a red face and a full suit and my wife would look at me like I was completely mad so I've written an autobiography so it's about you know obviously my <clears throat> I didn't realize how much I'd done yeah, I can certainly see why it's been an ideal time, really, to stop and write. I mean, there were positives from lockdown. You know, nature had a chance to recover. You know, suddenly the the streams and rivers are full of fish. The bushes are full of birds, you know. Um, it's never quite enough for David Attenborough, though, is it? Not quite, you know. <laughs> I kind of think, well, maybe there'd be more animals about if he hadn't told us where they were all hiding. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The fabulous Harry Hill there with his wonderful conservation tips. Remember, everyone, please do support the great work that JW3 is doing. And uh, that detail at the bottom of your screen, it's very easy to do so. Harry Hill, thank you very much. Uh, also, we'd love to hear from you this evening. If you'd like to comment and join the party that we're having, uh, please do use the chat boxes uh, or join us on Facebook or YouTube. Lots of ways to get in touch. We really would love to hear from you this evening and whether or not you're enjoying the show. Hopefully you are. So we're going to swiftly move on now and we are going to hear from one of our national treasures and that is no understatement star of stage and screen singer writer raconteur dame and great friend of JW3 please welcome the one and only dame Maureen Lippman via Zoom. Hello to you Maureen. Oh it's so nice to see you. I'm sorry that we can't see you in person but you're a very busy lady aren't you? What have you been up to during lockdown? Uh Oh, Lord, you look so different. What's happened there? Well, no, my hair grew. There were no hairdressers. And no glasses. <laughs> nice to see you. So what have you been doing in lockdown then? Oh, Lord. Uh, I loved the first lockdown, actually. It was, a, uh, it was a rest from ambition. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, nobody else was doing better than me, which went down very well, frankly. 
So I painted and I uh, wrote stuff and I um, Zoomed the grandchildren. I wrote a play for the grandchildren. You know, I liked the first lockdown. I walked, I saw friends I haven't seen for years. The second one was kind of more, if you know what I mean, I, I by, by that time, I mean, the actual thing is that I, I did Coronation Street throughout, so you couldn't really call it lockdown. There were only a few weeks at the beginning where we weren't actually working. And we stand two metres apart and we don't touch each other, which is tough if someone's got a love scene. Um, uh, and we don't drink anything and we don't uh, touch anything in the rooms. And we're standing, like, say, in the Dobbs house, which is where I mostly am, Somebody can, one actor can stand at the door, one actor can stand at the hob, and one actor can sit on the sofa. And that's extraordinarily difficult to be real. And I've watched, you know, they've watched a lot of it. They've done very well. They've won awards and stuff like that. And it is amazing what they've done, considering that all the laws of acting say you can't act like this. But, you know, we're all survivors, aren't we? Actors are all Jewish, really. We're all survivors. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, this, this place uh, needs desperately to survive. It's very hard to, to sell a cultural organisation, Natasha, very hard, because actually people think, well, you know, entertainment comes at the bottom of the pile. Food is first and then uh, education. And, of course, in some ways they're right, except that without nurture, without what we get from live events, uh, we, we wither. You're um, absolutely right. Um, you're, of course, a dame, and, and many of you know uh, are know as the, the grand dame of British Jewish culture. I don't know how that feels to have that title. <laughs> Neither do I. I, mean, <laughs> I guess <laughs> I go up next week. To, uh, no, no, the week after, I'm going to oh, uh, uh, to Windsor to get it, and hopefully, my 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 son will be my token escort. We're we're working on him getting a suit. Uh, have you got your outfit sorted then? I had that look. I've had this thing for this this honour for nearly two years, except I haven't got it. So I bought the dress, bought the coat from Thomas Arvesky then, and now I look at it and I think wrong. But I just can't <laughs> be. I cannot be asked to go up and get anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it leaves me so so terrified. I do not want to see my bottom half in a cubicle mirror. I really don't. So I'm going in the coat. It is very beautiful, but I just think maybe, you know how we lot sometimes overdress. You know what I mean? We like my mother always said accessory that the red hat with the red dress and the red glow, and I'll have a pair of red shoes to go with. <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to be that person. I want to be Jean Muir, but I can't because. The dress is covered in beans. <laughs> I'm sure you've nailed the look. Don't you worry about that and enjoy your day. But just quickly before you go, you've been here to JW3 many, many times and you've appeared on this very stage, of course. What is it about JW3 that you feel is so important and why the viewers who are watching should support us tonight? Well, they're supporting you by watching. Uh, the difficulty is, Natasha, that there are just so many good causes. And as I said earlier, um, drama as therapy and learning as therapy and communicating as therapy, it's very hard to see how great that is. It's what's kept us alive. It's what, it's what if you go and see the play Indecent at the Menu, and I urge you all to do that, you'll see that's what keeps Jewish people alive. And then we can give to the whole community and God, we give, God, we give and we give and we give. And then someone says, stop giving. <laughs> so it, it's incredibly important. Guide Dogs for the Blind is, is hugely important, but so is this. Just give whatever you can. I'm going to give something. Um, here, have this. <laughs> we'll put it up for the next auction Maureen thank you very very much for your time this evening enjoy your very special day thank day, you Maureen thank Littman. you, thank thank you. Thank so you. lovely thank to you. see you Thank you. Yeah. Well, yes, please listen to Dame Maureen Lippmann's advice. Give, 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 give. Now, the evening is steaming on, isn't it? It's going very fast, but there is still plenty to come and uh, enjoy, including Gabby Roslin, star of Fowder and hit and run Leo Raz. 
The award-winning director of The Handmaid's Tale, Mike Barker, uh, is joining us. Also the national treasure, the wonderful Claudia Winkleman. So there is still plenty more to come. But now we are going to enjoy a beautiful performance of some Jewish music filmed very recently at JW3, uh, conjuring up images of North Africa and the Middle East. So please sit back and enjoy the wonderful sounds of Ayin. So this one is, is a, 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 a song called Yodu Shimcha. Um, uh, we praise your name. <laughs> Hello, I'd like to wish everyone at JW3 the very best of luck for the 2021 Big Night In. Please give generously. Fantastic entertainment and thank you, Matt, another very good friend of JW3 who is going to be back on the stage here in just a few weeks time if you haven't got your tickets already and now sidling up to give another update on how we're doing so far. Raymond. Um, thank you. I was just enjoying the music and the comedy and everything else, and I almost forgot to check how well we're doing. Um, there's some uh, wonderful donations coming in at the moment. I'm just checking. Uh, thank you, uh, Giselle. Uh, just made a lovely donation. Uh, a few anonymous donations that are really outstanding. A £10,000 donation just came in uh, anonymously to Amy Dorfman's page. So thank you, whoever's friend of Amy just did that. We are really grateful. Uh, Alison Cares, thank you, and thank you for your wishes of good luck. We really appreciate that. So let's see, with all of those donations over the last sort of 15 minutes since we last updated you, where are we at? We're going to see the figure is going to come up on the screen now. We're at £365,000, OK, £365,157, which is good, but our target is at least £400,000. So we've really got to now step it up. If you are at home, if you are enjoying the show so far, you know what, even if you haven't enjoyed the show so far, which I find hard to believe, 
We're here to raise money for this fantastic charity, for this great cause. You, we, the only way that you can help us to help more people is by getting your phone out of your pocket or your laptop, typing in that charity, extra.com slash JW3 slash Big Night In or the QR code and making your donation. Make it as big as you possibly can and you will help us to help more people. So thank you. Now, let's see one more very short film, which is gonna highlight the impact of JW3's arts and culture programming, especially over the past year. Let's see the video. Arts and culture give us a lens to look through the world and to make sense of it. So even though a lot of our focus has been on social action and on education, we have fantastic facilities here to bring people in, to enjoy these things and to be uplifted by it. You can see this constellation at JW3 is building the next generation of Jewish artists and they're excited and inspired. I couldn't imagine another place that we could produce this type of theatre. I mean, this is a place where it's a hub of culture, of uh, uh, fun, of learning. Come to the concerts, come to uh, the events, come and read, come and talk, come and connect with people and learn something new, especially if you're into Jewish culture, Jewish community, and even if you're just into just expanding your horizons in the terms of music and art. You have a, a cinema, you have lectures, you have music, you have... Everyone can find whatever he, he likes to do and find friends and feel part of a community. It's, I, I wish more and more people will return back to the house. I love it here. I love it here, it's my second home. I really do. And we went into lockdown, our first thought was that how on earth are we going to bring this into people's homes? And on a regular basis, we brought cultural experiences right into people's houses, right through the screen. And the feedback we got from that was just so fantastic. Whether that was two, three hundred people every single week doing Hebrew classes, whether it was our huge events, launching David Baddiel's book to an audience of 6,000 people. Thank you to all of you for joining us today. Um, I surely don't need to introduce David Baddiel, who I call the George Clooney of JW3. Having another five and a half thousand people join us for the 50th anniversary celebration of the film Fiddler on the Roof, with six or seven of the original cast there. All of these things were uplifting people, engaging them, but also giving them a window into a world through arts and through culture. Well, another great reminder of, of why we're asking you to be so generous in your support this evening. And after such a long time where the doors of this very rather beautiful auditorium, I might say, were closed, it's great that JW3 has been welcoming back audiences for live, in-person cultural events, for concerts, comedy and more. And only a few days ago, uh, these walls apparently were ringing with laughter thanks to a magical night of Jewish comedy and chat with two very good friends of JW3, Judge Rob Rinder and Ashley Blaker. Now, we caught up with them backstage to record this very special message of support. Hello. Hello. We've just done our show on stage at JW3 and we had a great time, didn't we, Rob? Fantastic. What a play. It was great fun. It was great fun because we love JW3. Fantastic. So please support JW3 because it's a place where we and yeah. the two of so us... Please, you have to order them. I know. Just but we, you know, this... Who says please when you need money? Well, Jews yeah, get a lot of... You no, know, I don't need to do that. No, go, go on then. So, right, I'm ordering you to, to give money to JW3. I can do that. Yeah. Good job. Right? Yeah, okay. Thing. Go on. Go you on. have to ask nicely. I know, I have to. Go on. Right, right. So, right. Uh, this is an order. Perhaps it's uh, what? Uh, 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 look at it. two Jews, three opinions, one JW3. I mean, this is a place where it's a hub of culture, of uh, uh, fun, of learning, you know, and it's in West Hampstead. What's not to like apart from it's the parking? Nothing not to like, even right. the parking. Uh, who needs parking? Who's got petrol to drive a car anyway? It's so, got petrol. So, so use public yeah. transport. But please support 
JW3, mm -hmm. uh, do it now. He said please. No, no. Support it. It's an order. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Now, you really can't argue with Judge Rinder, can you? If he says you need to give to donate to JW3, then you need to. As you know by now, tonight is all about raising as much money as we can, raising money to support the incredible work we do here at JW3. And all day long, we've had, a, we've had about 100 or so champions who've been sending out messages to their community, to their friends, to their family. I want to say a big thank you to all the champions, wherever you are across the UK, who've been helping us raise money from so far over over a thousand different people have donated and the donations are still coming in. I'm not going to give you an update yet because I want to give everyone watching right now that chance. You know, when you see me on screen, I'm going to say one thing. Go to the QR code, go to the URL, go to that website, charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash big night in please give as big as you can give as generously as you can to help us reach more people than ever before and don't forget right now because of that match fund pot that i mentioned earlier every single pound you give doubles in value so please please give generously help us build community and strengthen society together very well said Still to come, I'm going to be chatting to Dame Arlene Phillips, Gabby Roslin and the wonderful Claudia Winkleman. But before that, we're adding an international flavour to this evening's events. Let's go live now to New York to talk to director of both the Israeli hits, hit and run and multi award winning The Handmaid's Tale, Mike Barker. Hello to you, Mike. How are you doing? I'm fantastically well. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's so fantastic that you've zoomed in. I mean, the world has become actually really quite small now that we can connect in this way. Um, but now, listen, tell me, how's lockdown been for you? How are you kind of coping as you re-emerge into the real world? Well, we got hit. We were in Tel Aviv when we got hit. So actually, Tel Aviv was one of the best places to be because yeah. they were jabbing everyone very, very quickly. Uh, so we got vaccinations very quickly uh, when we were over there. Um, and then it's actually been pretty good to me, to be honest. I've done three shows in COVID. It's tough, though working with masks and all the gear, but otherwise I've done pretty well. When you say three shows, what do you mean? I made a show for Warner Brothers called The Sandman, and I'm now doing a, I just shot a movie with Mila Kunis um, here in, well, I shot it in Canada, and I'm now editing it here in New York. All what in a hope. glad, yeah, what a glamorous life you have. Now, let's talk about Handmaid's Tale. I mean, it's kind of haunted us all. Um, did you know at the time that it was going to be such a big hit? Did the surprise come, you know, at you? How, how do you feel about that? I don't think so. I think I think there were so many real world events that were sort of coinciding with with some of the themes. Uh, so there were some parallels which were pretty ugly and fairly familiar, especially in America. And it's sort of coinciding with the Trump election and some of the restrictions on abortion and women's rights. Um, so I think all of those things sort of pertained in one little moment. And uh, I think it really hit home to quite a lot of people. Yeah, it's haunting, isn't it? I've, I've really struggled to go to get all the way through it, I have to say, having read all the books. But still, um, listen, everything you seem to touch turns to gold. Let's talk about Hit and Run, another extraordinary success story for you. Yeah, I was really lucky. I mean, I was really lucky. In fact, they were bringing it up looking for women directors. Um, they weren't actually looking for me at all. Um, <laughs> but but uh, because I know work with so many women on Handmaid's Tale, uh, that's why they're ringing me up. And I read the pilot and I really wanted to do it. And obviously because of Leo and and the guys from Fowder and and also the, the writers I knew very well. And it was just such a, it was also bilingual as well. It's half shot in Hebrew. I, I think Netflix have put it out on their mainstream in English, but it's actually shot in Hebrew and English. Um, and, you know, it's a real coming together of, of both the cultures. And it was a really great thriller to shoot and in Tel Aviv. Your life is very international. How does it feel to up sticks and just move? Is, is that something you've become quite used to? It's why I've been married 32 years. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, we are now going to include in our Zoom uh, one of the stars of Hit and Run and Fowder is one of Israel's best love actors. You've just mentioned him, haven't you? Uh, Leo Raz. I'm thrilled to say that he's joining us now from Tel Aviv. Talk about the world being small. And you're united again once more, gentlemen. We're never united, Leo and I. <laughs> oh, Mike. Here's Mike. Yeah, we're united again. <laughs> So, so tell us about the tension of your relationship then. You clearly know each other very well. Um, yeah, first of all, Mike is, you know, there's sometimes that you, you work with directors and you are like a gun for a hire. 
And, but with Mike immediately in the first second, we hated each other. No, I'm just kidding. We just, it was just like a love story of, uh, we, we became good friends. And then we became like a, an actor and director and we, both of us producers of the show. Um, and you know, and both of both of us, we worked in in, in different environment. We worked with in, with American crew, and we. And Mike is from England. I'm from Israel. But all of a sudden, we were finding ourselves outside of this cultural, I, I don't know, politically correct style working. And it was just me and Mike there. It was fun. It was, and we're going to work together for sure again and again and again. So, Mike, can you tell us a few kind of inside stories about how you do work constructively together, or is that all tightly bound up in secrecy? Um, I think that the thing the thing about working in Israel is the Israelis, on the whole, are incredibly frank. There is no soft, there's no pillow talk. So, so just it does, so even my assistant, when she would terrify me, you know, when she would get me in the morning, I'd be so frightened of my own assistant. So, so when you move up the ladder, it gets more and more terrifying. Basically, it's how it works. And um, but I think. That there's a, there's a, a real simplicity to the conversation because everyone is so frank. So there isn't that there is very simple to know where you stand straight away. So in many regards, it was actually one of the easiest experiences I've ever had. I loved every single second of my time in Tel Aviv. If I could, I would live there. I mean, I literally loved it so much. Um, and and the way that we work there, I mean, I think what Leo was Leo, um, sort of referring to with the cultural differences, we make films very differently. I mean, it's it's much more rigid in America. It's much. It's much bigger, it's much more defined. And you get to Israel and it's much more passionate. The boundaries are blurred. It's sort of more, slightly more chaotic. It's louder, it's noisier. And frankly, it's more exciting. Um, Mike, I know you've got to leave us shortly, but do you think you guys will work together again? I mean, is that a union that you'll just keep pursuing? No, it yes. was the last time, that's it. <laughs> I would work with Leo every single day of the week. I loved every single second of it. He puts himself on the line in a way that most actors don't. He steps into unfamiliar territory. He, you know, he, he's not prepared, he's prepared, throw himself off buildings, burst into floods of tears, do everything that's required of him. And, uh, you know, he's a very special person to work with. Oh, fantastic. Mike, it's been so great to talk to you. Leo, please don't go anywhere. But Mike, I know you have to zoom off, don't you? So uh, thank you off. for your time. I uh, hope to meet you in person at some stage very soon. Very much uh, you. Thank you, Mike. Um, Leo, um, we were hearing from Mike before you joined us a little bit about how kind of lockdown had affected his career and he'd been really, really constructive and busy. What about you? What did you get up to? Actually, it was the same. You know, we were in, in Tel Aviv starting shooting foul, uh, hit and run. And all of a sudden, we had to stop immediately, everything. Everybody went home, all the crews from all over the world, from Australia, London, Eng uh, everywhere, the US, everybody left in a second. And we stayed for eight months in Israel for the first time after a few years that I'm traveling all over the world with my family for, but there was some problems because I quit smoking and I start baking. <laughs> so for eight months, I gained like, I think like seven kilos. And then I got a call. We go, we're coming back to shoot the show. So if there is continuity that you have, you know, so I had to lose seven kilos in two months. It was crazy. So, but it was, it was a great time. And I think when Mike, as Mike said, when Mike and the crew came again to Israel after like eight months, the synergy was so good. Everybody worked together like in, uh, it was it was amazing experience for everyone. So and also it was very hard to, to shoot in that way with masks and, 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 and like the COVID police. We had COVID police there that if you were without masks, they were annoying you. It was it was hard and nobody knew a lot about this COVID thing. Mm. The story of baking and putting on a few extra pounds is probably quite familiar, but you have to tell us you've definitely still stopped smoking, haven't you? Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's a good thing. That's good. So something constructive's come out of it. Let's it talk about it. Was, it was all Mike fault. He, uh... <laughs> um, tell me a bit more about Founder now. It's one of Israel's biggest ever global hits. Uh, and as a consequence, you've got a huge following here in the UK and in fact, all over the world. How much of a surprise was that for you? Huge surprise because when we wrote Fauda, we thought, first of all, that nobody going to watch it because actually nobody wanted it in Israel. Nobody, no network wanted it. Just in the end, we, we, we sold it to, to one network. So it was very hard sell. 
And I thought that just my family and Avi's, my partner family will watch the show. And all of a sudden it became big hit in Israel. And then we, we found out that Netflix bought it. And I thought it's a bad idea because who want to want to want to watch a show in Hebrew and Arabic, you know, all over the world. It's like in, it, that happens in Israel. It became a huge hit. And actually because of COVID, so the third season released, we released it during COVID, during the, the lockdown all over the world. So, so many people watched it. So many, much more than the first and the second episode, uh, season. So yeah, it's it surprised us and we are thankful about it. And we are, you know, every day we say thank you. You know, it's it's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's amazing, really. And you deserve all the success and you should enjoy it, of course. So what are you up to now? So first we have, um, we're going to shoot, start shooting Fauda 4 next month in Israel. Uh, and we have another show for Showtime and another show for Netflix and another movie. Yeah, we're working uh, all over the world and we're having a great time and trying to uh, make people happy. Have you put away your cookery books? Are you still able to bake a little bit as well? Have you got a new balance? Or I left it. No, 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 no. I'm not baking anymore. Anything, <laughs> anything. No bread, no cakes, nothing, because I'm a good cooker. So <laughs> good baker. So I don't want to do it again. That's it. Okay. You've ticked that box. Leo, thank you so much for your time today. It's really fantastic to talk to you. And uh, next time you're in the UK, please, you can come and join us here at JW3. You'd Definitely. be uh, and you, receiving of a huge welcome. So thank you very much for your time. You do an, ama an amazing job and thank you for what you're doing. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Well, wow, wasn't that great? Uh, that really was very, very special to speak to both Mike and Lior. Uh, and we've still got so much more to come. Uh, so please do stay with us. Hopefully you're reaching for your phones because you're, you know, enjoying the experience and you're feeling generous. Uh, but before we welcome our next guest, uh, we do want to show you another insight into JW3's important charitable work. Uh, the staff here at JW3 have been very, very busy with a, a truly packed programme of arts, culture, education, and family programming. So it was an absolute delight, certainly for me, to learn about the incredible social action work that really does transform the lives of thousands of people uh, from the local community here and, more importantly, from the wider society. So please do now sit back and, and watch some of what the wonderful volunteers and the staff of this charity have been doing lately uh, to really make a difference in the community. JW3 transforms lives through community. What do I mean by that? Well, one of our core values is chesed, that's loving kindness. That's doing physical acts to help make people's lives better. We opened a food bank, which we thought might be there for a couple of months, and now, over 18 months later, over 180,000 meals worth of food have been delivered to families in need all over the borough of Camden because of our volunteers. And it's not just the people that receive the food that get something from it. It's this community of 50, 60 volunteers that have come week in, week out to cook together, to schlep together, to pack bags together, to drive and deliver food together. They're all doing it together. And they come from different parts of the community, but they have this thing in common that they're doing, these acts of loving kindness. But that's not all we've done. We partner with the Bike Project to collect hundreds of bikes from people that don't need them anymore, which goes to refugees to help improve their lives. We hosted the Camden Vaccine Bus here, where about 150 people came to JW3 to get their life-saving COVID vaccination. Okay, I am here at JW3, and behind me is the Vaccine Bus. They've just told me they've got more space, they can get through more people, they're getting through them really quickly, and they'd love to get more people vaccinated today at JW3. And because we're really conscious that mental health issues have been really high on the agenda during lockdown, I'm really proud that we bought the Jamie Headroom To Go mobile cafe into our piazza for the entire summer. And all of those different things were about JW3 providing a lifeline for our community.
Well, I'm sure you'll agree that this impressive work is well worth your support. And I'm sure, like me, you are all itching to know how the campaign is going. So come on, put us out of our misery, please. Tell us how we're doing. OK, well, let's get the latest total and then I'll tell you a little bit more. So can we get the total up on the screen? See how we're doing? How close are we to our 400,000? OK, we're on 384,314 pound on the big screen, which is just phenomenal. And that includes, I can see on my screen, a 10,000 pound donation that's just come in. And my favourite donation of the night so far has just come in. If you have a look on the donations page, when you make a donation, you leave your name or anonymous. Someone has just made a £4,000 donation in the name of We Love Lior. So, so that's just why there hasn't been a We Love Raymond donation yet. So <laughs> if Lior Raz can get a £4,000 donation in We Love Lior, my ego is saying I want a £5,000 donation in We Love Raymond. So can I have just, a £6,000 I mean, donation? I mean, if I'm worth five, you're worth 50. So let's, I think a 5000 for me, a 50000 if it's We Love Natasha Kavinsky. <laughs> We've got, we got to hit big. Um, that, that, last uh, film was one of the ones that really moves me because mm -hmm. it's about, as I said in that film, the multiple ways which JW3 gives back to not just Jewish community, but wider society. The, the floor we're standing on, the, the hall we're in now, yes, it has comedy and concerts and music, but only a few weeks ago, we had a, a room full of Holocaust survivors coming back for their first in-person event for any of them in two years. Two days ago, 125 people, myself included, were giving blood. Um, and we do that every three months. We have people giving blood. And only this morning, we had 20 or so volunteers packing up bags for the food bank, delivering over 150 food parcels to families in need in the local area. And that's just in this one very room. So really, that's why you're giving tonight. Whether your love is arts and culture, whether your love is Jewish identity, whether your love is all about making the world a better place and strengthening society, you know that every, you know this by now, right? <laughs> every pound you give will be doubled. So whatever it is that you can give, if you've given once and you just think you've enjoyed it so much or you've been moved by what you've seen and you can give that little bit more, please do. And if you haven't yet had the opportunity to give because you've been enjoying so much of the talent tonight, then now, now's the chance when I'm talking. Don't listen to me. Just go to charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash big night in and please give as generously as you can to help us build community. Absolutely. It's very impressive what you do here. So Thank well you. done to you. What a, what a lovely job you've got as well. I'm You're very a lucky. lucky man. You certainly are. Uh, Raymond, thank you. Um, and of course, let me add my thanks to everybody at home who's given so generously. And, and if you haven't had a chance, please do go to the donation page and support this important work. And I would just say that, of course, the big numbers are amazing. And it really is special when a big donation comes in. But actually, it's just as special to see a donation of £10 or £5, because you know that that person who's given that money has really really treasured that and it's a, a really big gift so thank you very much no matter how big or small your donation we are very very grateful so we're going to move on now to our next guest the wonderful broadcaster radio and podcast host what doesn't she do gabby roslin uh, very good evening to you gabby so tell us what you're up to these days um well i'm very busy thank goodness uh i work at bbc radio london i have a sunday lunchtime show at midday been doing that now for eight years um i'm working at virgin radio i stand in for my wonderful uh ex-television partner chris evans on virgin radio and i have my podcast that gabby roslin podcast which has we're very lucky to have had the most incredible guests so uh still i, I get surprised every time they say yes oh really <laughs> Absolutely, we enjoy it so much. And, and isn't it so lovely seeing normality start to return after such a tough period? Uh, yeah, I think uh, the fact that everyone can be live again is so important. So many friends of mine uh, are in theatre and in film and in television and theatre was and music, obviously, uh, was struck so badly by the past 18 months and seeing them going back out there. We all, I think all of us who are in this industry, this crazy industry are so thrilled that things are happening again because it's our, it's our lifeblood. And it's, I think deep down inside, lots of people have realized that it's about our love of this. It's not an addiction. It's not an obsession. It's because we love it. I love doing live television. I love doing live radio. I love going to the theatre. 
I love seeing live music. So all of that is vitally important. And it's so important for, for the people who watch it. So the people who work in it, um, you know, I've got so far too many friends who work behind the scenes in theatre who've struggled. Literally, they've become uh, delivery drivers. And I know lots of people who you would probably all know who became delivery drivers because there was no money for anybody. Uh, it was a very, very tough time. Let's hope that we're out of that, but it's still tough for a lot of people. But it's important, that connection as well, the human connection to have somebody there, either me as a watcher or somebody up there doing it. It's very important for that human connection. Here, here, very well said. Gabby, thank you very much and very lovely to have you with us. Uh, well, as you will have all noticed, uh, we're bringing almost all of our guests to you tonight virtually. Uh, and though Raymond and I are live here at JW3, we are beaming out live into your homes, uh, a world that we've all had to get used to since March of last year. We've got quite good at it now, haven't we? Well, JW3 adapted remarkably well to ensure that it could continue running its diverse set of programmes, of activities, of classes, of talks, performances, and and more, all of course online. And, and as they came out of lockdown and reopened, this magnificent community centre for in-person activities, uh, they went on to ensure that everybody could participate, whether physically actually here or from home, anywhere in the UK or just around the world. So let's see a little bit now about uh, how they have approached this new hybrid world. Let me show you our brand new hybrid learning room. In this room, regardless of where you are, whether you're at JW3 or somewhere else in the world, you'll be able to learn with us and our fabulous courses. And the way we do it is using this brand new screen, which is a computer, it's a whiteboard, it goes straight to Zoom as well, and we can see all of our Zoom participants on the screen. So if you're joining us from South Africa, from Israel, from America, you're still part of the room, you're here with us, which is what we really wanted to achieve. There they are, popping up on your screen, life-size. And it's very much as if, almost, I'm down in London at JW3, sitting round a table and talking to them. Hi Aviva, hi Judy. It's friendly, it's interactive. When you get to schmooze with people and say hello, have a cup of coffee, you know, see the people in the building, as well as do the learning. I thought we'd lose that, but actually we haven't. People are logging on early, we're having tea breaks, they're staying on longer. I tried to get rid of them after two hours, they all want to stay on and schmooze. To make sure that our programme is truly multi-accessible, it needs equipment, it needs trained staff, and it needs a range of programming that is specifically designed to be as high quality whether you are in the room or at home. That's where we need your help. The most empowering thing that has ever happened to me teaching a group of Jews is having a mute button. <laughs> Well, such important work. So please do be as generous as you can in your support to help JW3 reach even more people across the UK and even further afield. Well, sadly, the evening is steaming along and we haven't got so much time left together. So let's pull out all the stops, shall we now, and support JW3 if you can. Come on, Raymond, how are we doing? I've just seen someone send a message saying, we love Raymond. I did. I mean, <laughs> I was worth £20 and I'm very grateful for that £20 and, and my ego has been kept in check. I know what I'm worth. Um, but thank you for that £20. Thank you to, I'm just looking at my screen so some donations coming in. Uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey and Evelyn Wynne, thank you so much for your support. Uh, David Fraser, thank you for your support. Mossy and Libby, thank you for your support now and all year round. Um, now, I do want to get another total up, so I want to see how we're getting on because we want to edge as close as we can to that 400,000. We are on 389,000 and 89 pounds, that's a hard one to read. 389,089 pounds is what we're on, which means we are getting there, but there is still 
some way to go. And luckily, there is still time to go. We've still got some special guests and some special messages to come. So please, you know what to do. When I'm on the screen, that's when you give. When the stars are on the screen, sit back and enjoy the show. Now, this time last year, and I know many of you tuned in, we had just over 50,000 people in about 18,000 households that were watching. And I stood here asking you to give as big as you could. And we smashed our fundraising record. Thanks to every single one of you that watched and supported. It's the first time we've tried one of these live online fundraising events. I was really grateful to my co-host that night, Tracy Ann Oberman. Tracy's been a great friend of JW3 since before we even opened our doors. She's currently starring as a Jewish anti-fascist hero in BBC's fantastic Ridley Road, as well as on stage in the West End as Camilla. So she couldn't join us tonight. But backstage, she sent us this message of support. Hello, hello, JW3 and the big night in. I'm so sorry I'm not with you tonight. As you can see, I am in my dressing room in the West End of London and uh, I've just come off stage, but I hope you have the most fantastic evening thinking of you all. It's such a worthwhile and brilliant place. So do please support it. Take care, Mazel Tov. <sighs> Fantastic to see you, Tracy Ann. Well, our next guest is a director, a choreographer, and our second dame of the evening. Uh, what illustrious company we are keeping. From staging hot gossip, judging Strictly Come Dancing, and directing the Pythons, let's find out how recent events have affected the truly wonderful Arlene Phillips. Good evening to you, Arlene. It's been a seriously tough time, hasn't it? And so how's it been for you in lockdown? Lockdown was really difficult, you know, from a moment of looking into the year ahead with one musical after another after another five musicals which is a lot but all time so i could just work on them to not having anything to do being isolated from friends from family um was a real shock and quite quite emotionally disturbing it took me a while to start feeling that I could create, even if I was alone. Um, and I think what helped me was walking. I was doing about 20,000 steps a day as exercise, um, listening to music. And then um, after three and a half months, at the first sort of release of, of, of people that we could suddenly mix carefully with others. Um, I directed um, a production of Hair on the jetty um, from the Turbine Theatre um, at Battersea. And that was just so uplifting, so special. Um, it meant everything. It's like one of the highlights in my life to suddenly get back and and do something in musical theatre as brilliant as hair is. Yeah, no surprise you've been busy like that. But how does online work compare with being in front of a live audience, would you say? Live venues are so important because seeing something live, it's a play, it's a musical, it, it's it's emotionally uplifting or it can be uh, some some musicals or plays have a real shock factor but it, it drives something inside you probably called your called your soul to live the moment not just when you're seeing a production but when you go outside and then you share it and you talk about it and you think about it. it it's good for the mind, the heart, the body. It, it's, it's inspiring. And we need inspiration in our lives. We certainly do the magic of theatre. Thank you very much, Dame Arlene, for that. That was wonderful. So very sadly, we are coming to the end of our time together. But before we uh, do and welcome our final guests, one short film to remind us now of JW3's life-saving community work that we are all here to support tonight. JW3 transforms lives through community. What do I mean by that? Well, one of our core values is chesed, 
that's loving kindness, that's doing physical acts to help make people's lives better. We were doing that way before lockdown, but during the whole pandemic, it became a critical part of our work. When lockdown happened and JW3 had to close its doors to the public, we weren't immediately sure of what we could do that would be helpful. And what we discovered was that actually there was a huge, huge need for people in the surrounding area and a little further afield, people that were isolating, that couldn't go out to get their own food or were unable to cook for themselves. And so JW3 looked to see how we can step up to really fulfill the need to help anyone that finds themselves in food poverty. In under 24 hours, we managed to take about four and a half tonnes of food from Arsenal Football Club and repackage it and get it out to the people that really, really need it. This is a package from JW3. Thanks. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to JW3 for your food. It would be well appreciated in the community. We started off small and we were just cooking meals in our demo kitchen here with a team of volunteers for around 30 people. Now we're sending out over a thousand meals in terms of both cooking and the food packages every single week. I'm happy to do it and I've had a couple of friends come in with me to do it as well, other young boys like me. So I think, yeah, it's a great thing to do and I'm glad that we can do something to give back. It's all for a good cause, a really good cause, and it's, it's quite fun to see what you can come up with in a few hours. Fix yourself, uh, fix the relationship you have around you, and then do the best to fix the world. So um, this is pretty much all three in one. Having social action be a core part of what JW3 is and believes in has really helped us to step up into this brilliant role where we've become a beacon of light to the surrounding area and the Jewish community as a whole. To see that this building hasn't just stood empty whilst this is going on, and it's not just the people that receive the food that get something from it, it's this community of 50, 60 volunteers that have come week in, week out to cook together, to schlep together, to pack bags together, to drive and deliver food together. They're all doing it together, and they come from different parts of the community, but they have this thing in common that they're doing, these acts of loving kindness. I'm devastated that we need to do this work, but I am so immensely proud of everyone who's been involved in creating this food bank. My colleague Jacob and a team of phenomenal volunteers who every single week come here. They give their time. They are collecting food from their neighbours. Wonderful people like Ruth. I know you're at home watching this. Ruth Finkel, you are a superstar. They are collecting food. They're bringing food in. They're coming to the kitchen to cook or they're packing the bags or they are driving. Nobody comes here to get their meals. We take them to everybody's doors. We deliver it right to their homes. We deliver it with dignity and we have a doorstep conversation with those people. Some of, some of whom I have not spoken to anyone for a number of days. And we've now just passed over 190,000 meals worth of food that has been delivered from this very building to families all around Camden and into Barnet. And we can only do that thanks to those brilliant volunteers and thanks to the support of every single one of you that has been giving tonight or all during the year. That's why we're asking for you to give tonight. That's why we're asking for you to be generous. That's why we need your support, because we are literally saving people's lives. It shouldn't be our job to do it. But with the recent cuts to universal credit, that need has grown even more. So please, 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 that's why I'm here asking you to give as big as you can to reach even more people. It's impacting on the lives of the poorest households in this community. And every pound you give at the moment 
until the match fund pot runs out will be doubled. And even after we've passed through our target, which we will do at some point soon, I want you to carry on giving if you haven't had a chance to give, because every pound that you give will help us to reach these people and to help them. So thank you. Absolutely. Underline that again and again and again. All the details at the bottom of your screen if you want to give anything, charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash big night in. The details, of course, are there and uh, the QR code. It's very, very simple. Now, as my final guest of the evening, uh, please welcome a very, very familiar face. It's uh, like, you know, the old days with Claudia Winkleman. Good evening to you, Claudia. Hello. Claudia Winkleman. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm so sorry that there is a weird light over my face. We've tried to fix it. I've been on a ladder. I can't. I can't. It's lovely. It's like a bit of glory shining down on you. I apologise. I don't even know where it's from. I'm confused. I thought (laughs) it was my children hiding with torches, but it's not. Worry not, you look gorgeous. Now, of course, you're in the middle of Strictly, and I have to say, you know, all those years ago that I was on that dance floor, the music still haunts me, but you've got such a strong lineup this time. We're all glued. Oh, thank you so much. And also, thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say, the work that you all do is extraordinary there. And Raymond is amazing. I'm in love with him. Just please, he should do Strictly. He can do a rumba on Saturday if he wants. And I'm fully behind you. And just thank you so much to everybody who's donated. But yes, Strictly. And I love them. They're all amazing. And I just, I keep on telling the bosses, why doesn't everybody just stay? Nobody should leave. Like, let's not do the dance off. And they go, (laughs) thanks, Claude. Go and read out loud, love. Yeah, okay. But one thing I always think when I watch is why do you and Tess not dance a little bit more? I mean, surely you're tempted. You've got enough professionals there to whisk you around the dance floor. No, no, no. I'm absolutely terrible. I'm not allowed to, I'm not allowed to move, really. There's no, (laughs) I'm not in those heels. I have to stand and I sway a bit. And then I ask other people, no, I'd be absolutely terrible. Tess is very good. Let me just say that out loud. (laughs) <laughs> that's a challenge um now quickly claudia lockdown how was that for you what have you been up to um i can't complain because so many people had um a really horrible time so my thoughts are with them uh for us it was i mean i drove my kids around the bend i'm not very good at homeschooling let's just say that but we were fine because i have to find wood and knock my head and uh but we were okay so thank you so much but i know that it was so terrible for so many it has been hard and my times tables got a lot better as well, I have to say, with the children's maths. I do kind of relate Excellent. to that. Um, Claudia, before we let you go, um, arts, culture, community, it's so important. You've given us a plea already. We're really trying to hit a really big target tonight. Um, if you can't persuade people to give money, then nobody can. So give it one final shot. Well, what I would say is this is, um, I've anyway, the tiniest makes all the difference. Absolutely. So if you're sitting and you're watching now going, I can't give any, you know, or I can't give 20 quid, but I could probably give five. That's all it needs. That's all it needs. And it's phenomenal. And if everybody does, does that, you would reach your target, then it's doubled and you can continue to help. And what you do for the community and further afield and the extraordinary work, the idea that JW3 in 24 hours when we need to communicate with everybody, uh, people work so hard, they volunteer. Um, so don't worry about what you can give is all I would say. Anything helps and it is so gratefully received and it's a wonderful charity and I'll do anything to be helpful. Oh, that's wonderful, Claudia. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for sparing your time this evening. No, not at all. Thank you for having me. I'm so sorry about the weird blue glow. No, I can't apologise enough. Should, I think it should follow you around wherever you go. It's, it's it, I'll see you on Strictly. Magic. <laughs> Lots of love to you. Bye-bye, Thank Claudia you. Winkleman. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Thanks for having me. Don't forget exactly what Claudia said. It doesn't matter whether you can give the big bucks or just one or two pounds. Everything is match funded tonight. So it's extra special, that donation you can give, however small, however large. And very, very sadly, looking at my watch, it's, you know, it's really the end of the evening. I feel quite sad. It's been an incredible evening uh, and a huge achievement with a really astonishing amount of money raised so far. Um, and here to round uh, round off that total and kind of give us one final push. No doubt he's going to be asking you to re deep one more time it's Raymond well I've got to practice my move now oh, yeah, I've been invited on. on I've really I've got to get into shape now I've got to lose a little bit of the no, no, you're uh, all right you're all right you're all right limber up a little bit so uh if you don't see me here next year doing this it's uh watch out on BBC
BBC One. I'll be doing, <laughs> I'll be doing the rumba. Uh, uh, that's made my night, really. Um, OK, thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, we are going in a minute to get our latest total. Um, but before we get to that total, I just want to remind you that whatever total I announce in a minute, whatever comes up on the screen, um, and I'm hoping for some really good news, we're not turning off the donations. It's not just, oh, OK, we've reached that number and you've enjoyed the show and go home. If you haven't had a chance to give, I've said it many times, please keep giving. You can give for the rest of the evening. You can give over the coming days. If you think there's someone else that you know that would be moved by the work that we do, share the web page. Share the charityextra.com webpage. It's got all those videos on it. Pick the one that moved you most or that you think will move your friend, your neighbour, your colleague. If you come to JW3 and you enjoy the events, if you're being inspired, uplifted, if your parents or your children or your grandchildren or your grandparents come here and you know they benefit from it, whoever it is, please help us spread the word. Let's reach as many people as we can because we're in this together and we are building community with a focus on unity. That might sound cheesy to some, but we really, really mean it. So please keep giving. Whatever total I'm about to reveal, don't stop giving. So let's have a look. It's going to come up on the screen right now. I'm waiting in anticipation. I don't know the number. And that number is £404,055. We have broken through the four. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank goodness. We have broken through the £400,000 mark. We're on £404,055. I really can't thank you enough, every single one of you that's given. And what I found really moving looking at the, uh, the donations page is how many of you have donated in memory of someone. And those names of all those people, your parents, grandparents, partners that you're mentioning are all there on the website. So please, I urge you, go to charityextra.com forward slash JW3 forward slash Big Night. And you all know it by now. You can tell me the, uh, the website. Have a look at the comments that people have made. Have a look at the donations. Spread the word. Let's, let's really, really, really keep going. Let's really keep giving. Um, I really want to say, I'm going to hand over to Natasha for the final word, but before we do that, I just want to say a huge thank you to Natasha for bearing with us over the uh, last few weeks of Zoom meetings, schlepping over here, giving your time to us. Um, it really, really is generous. We do not take it for granted. A huge thank you to you. You've been the absolute star that's kept everything going. Thank you. A huge thank you to every single one of our guest stars. They've all logged in 30, 40, 50 minutes before. They've been in a virtual green room um, being schmoozed by our colleague Rachel thank you all for giving an hour an hour and a half of your time for putting up with last minute schedules for bearing with us when zoom links went down we really do appreciate that we also really want to thank all of the volunteers all of our champions there are 113 of you so I can't name you all you know who you are you've been doing a phenomenal job over the last 36 hours I really have to thank a phenomenal trustee of ours and jd 3 like all charities relies on trustees they are volunteers as well they give so much time and one of them amy dorfman has chaired this whole thing for the last six months really amy we can't thank you enough what you have done to help get us to this total um, nobody knows except sharon and i and sharon and camden and the team and all of our professional colleagues you've done a fantastic job and also to james and the crew at locked in we're very very fortunate to work with some of the greatest professionals in the in the live streaming business so james um, in Barbados and in Ireland. We really thank you. We're jealous of where you are, but we really thank you for your hard work. If anybody out there is looking to do one of these big live events, be in touch. We can recommend some great people. So I'm going to hand over for the last word tonight um, to our wonderful star host, Natasha Kaplinski. Oh, thank you very much. And I'll add the crew actually as an amazing support this evening. Thank you very much to everybody who've supported us. You've really been fantastic. Um, I've had lots of on-screen husbands in my time. Um, I know that Claude has invited you for a rumba, but if you take your ring off, <laughs> if, um, if you don't fancy a rumba, then we'll have to set off a little sofa somewhere and start doing this for real because you, um, you're a great uh, co-presenter with me. So thank you so much for everything, for having me here this evening. Um, it's been an enormous insight to see the phenomenal work that you and all of your volunteers and staff do uh, and I wish you the very best going forward. Um, it's been such a pleasure to be part of this fundraising event. Um, as we can see the totals are rising and rising. Uh, we know we've hit a big number but I think it's going to go up and up and I look forward to a phone call in the next day or so when you tell me that you've reached a number that you can't even imagine right now. So thank you very much. Um, you know that you can carry on giving. You know that um, there is so much work 
to be done in the community uh, and this is a place that can make it happen so thank you for your time this evening for joining us wherever you've been hopefully we'll meet in person very soon but for now we send you lots of love and thank you very much for your precious time tonight thank you <laughs>